Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a daily energy update, uh, daily draw style reading. Uh, we don't actually have any tarot cards in here. I'm using two different oral de oracle decks. One is the Divine Animals Oracle and the other one is the Moonology cards. Uh, so we got six piles. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So go ahead and pick your pile and the links to the piles are down in the description box. And I just noticed how blue, <laughs> how blue this is. Everything is blue. Um, I hope nobody is feeling too blue today, but I guess we'll find out uh, what is going on for you. I think this is going to be pretty interesting using the animals and the uh, moon cards uh, to kind of see what kind of magic is coming through for you today. So let's get started with pile one. I think I'll do just one card at a time here. First card is 23, the Raven, with the subtext, News. Oh man. So this uh, Raven card, this Raven magic, talks about uh, receiving messages, but not just any kind of message. This is receiving a message like from the other side, like beyond the veil. Now, crows and ravens are thought to be able to... Uh, travel between realms between worlds like whatever you know, it'll vary depending on you know your your belief system whatever else you think is out there beyond our like tangible reality uh the raven can can travel there and can come back and can bring you messages so if you if you guys live in an area with ravens especially uh you know if you live near water you absolutely could be finding some ravens um watch for them and if you when you if you hear them uh calling um, pay attention to what you're thinking about, uh, when you hear a raven. And I think this, this energy isn't actually just for today. I think this will kind of, uh, bleed for you, uh, into your, maybe the last few days into the next coming weeks. Pay attention to ravens. And when you see ravens on, uh, t-shirts or on TV or any, uh, documentaries that are about ravens, pay attention to that because the raven magic is going to be trying to bring you a message either about, uh, a departed loved one or something that you should be paying attention to but aren't. Uh, maybe there's something your higher self has been trying to draw your attention to, to get you to do, to get you to learn, uh, to get you to move on from. Um, there's going to be something that I feel like you're going to be prodded to, to pay attention to something and it, it, this, this really could even be a message from somebody, you know, who died and they're trying to get in touch with you to, to tell you something, to tell you like, you know, don't make the mistakes I made, uh, or, you know, don't grieve for me, you know, over, over much because, you know, I'm okay. Um, so be open to receiving messages from sources that seem kind of unbelievable and pay attention to anything with ravens going on. And your other card is this energy is gaining momentum. Waxing moon. That's kind of cool because this is about uh, the day I'm filming this. This is about how how much the moon is showing. <laughs> uh, so this reinforces to me the idea that uh, that this message isn't just for today. That it's actually going to be building possibly over the next moon cycle. So the next couple of weeks. Um, and with this, I would say pay attention to the next full moon whenever you're watching this because uh, those messages could be coming through on the full moon. And I think that's it for pile one. Okay, let's uh, take a look at pile two here. Doing one card at a time. Happiness, dolphin. What a beautiful card. This card is really calling you to find your happiness and do more of what it makes you happy. But really, there's this particular energy of remember that your happiness comes from within you and that you cannot be given happiness from anybody else. Um, you know, this is a, a pretty common thing to happen where people feel like 
I mean, I've been there. Let's focus on what, how I've been, how I've felt. And, you know, you can relate to this as you will. Um, you know, I used to feel like, you know, if only I, if only when I was a kid, I was like, if only my parents would stop being such dicks then I could be happy. And then, then I was in school and then I was like, if only I could graduate and get my degree, then I would be happy. And then as if I, if only I could get this good job, then I'd be happy. And it was always, always, always saying, if only I could live in the perfect situation, I'd be happy. And then one day I actually got into a situation where, you know, it's not like my life was perfect or anything, but it was actually, it was good. Everything was good. I, like all areas, you know, I had friends, I had, a, I was in a good relationship. I had enough money to, you know, pay the bills and a little left over. And I had free time and everything should have been good, but I was still miserable. And that's when I realized like, wow, <laughs> I'm never going to be happy by trying to get stuff from the outside. You know, your happiness really has to come from the inside. And I know that's like really cliche, but I think most of us, know that like on a cognitive level but to actually like really get that like have that sink into your soul and have that really inform the way you live like moment to moment is a whole another level and that is probably the lesson you're going through right now you know try to live like the dolphin imagine just imagine just swimming wild and free out there in the in the beautiful tropical ocean you know, how uh, just focusing on that moment of, you know, jumping out of the water and flying for just just a minute, even though you're a sea creature. Try to find what what inside of you do you need to make you happy? Like what needs to be addressed? What needs to be healed? Those are questions you can be uh, thinking about over the next few weeks while you uh, work on finding your your inner peace. Right. And let's see what the moon card is. Surrender to the divine full moon. Holy. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly this. Uh, the, the, this full moon surrendered to the divine. To me, this is really the divine feminine, especially, you know, following up with those dolphins. Uh, you know, this is exactly what I was just saying with, uh, you know, you're not going to find your happiness in, you know, in your friends, in your career, in your living situation, even in your relationships, right? Those things won't make you happy unless you're already happy from within. And you're not going to be happy <laughs> from within unless you can surrender to the divine. And the divine can be whatever that means to you, right? Uh, you know, even if you're an atheist, and I don't, I'm not entirely sure how many atheists watch tarot uh, videos, <laughs> but even if you're an atheist, you know, you don't need to be surrendering to uh, any kind of deity or even any kind of higher power beyond just the higher power of of the earth and it's it's mystery right um and you know letting go of needing all of your material world uh to come into a specific kind of outcome and situation for if you can kind of surrender all of that and surrender to the flow of the universe that is when you can find that uh happiness from within and you can you know be free as the dolphins okay pile three responsibility meerkat this card uh and this is also number 16 um i'm not mentioning the numbers for all of them but uh, if I'm drawn to the number 16 might mean something for somebody. So uh, pay attention to, to 16 dates, time, whatever it, uh, whatever, whenever that number jumps out for you. But this card uh, right here, you know, you're this, you're this little dude here, but he's, he's a little guy and he's the center of the circle. And you wouldn't think that the meerkat has any really responsibility or power, right? He's just a little dude especially with all these, you know, greater, more powerful animals around him, you know, zebra, hyena. I think that's a cheetah. It's hard for me to see. Um, and these guys over here, you know, you don't think that the meerkat is a central figure, but here he is standing up on the podium holding his staff and he's, he's the lookout. And this card really speaks to having responsibility to others as well as yourself. Okay. Um, it's almost like you have a responsibility to yourself first to get yourself into a situation where you can look after others, right? You don't want to be constantly serving everybody else, constantly worrying about everybody else um, if you haven't gotten yourself into alignment yet. And look at this guy. He looks, <laughs> to me, he, he looks aligned. And the staff, that's always a sign of the, like, access mundi. 
you know, your, uh, your connection between, you know, the center of the earth and the center of the galaxy or, and beyond. Um, so for this card, in order to, in order to be able to carry out your responsibility and do whatever it is that you feel responsible for to the people around you and your community, um, you need to get yourself into alignment first, you know, aligned with the center of the earth and all the way up to whatever it is that you believe is out there. You need to get all your ducks in a row and you need to be centered and you need to be coming from a piece of a place of peace and equanimity and then you can be of service to your community around you. Oh, that was pile two. We're doing pile three. You and your loved ones are safe. New moon in cancer. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I almost don't. <laughs> How synchronous, right? We were just talking about a um, don't worry about everybody else, uh, even though you feel called to be of service to others because you and your loved ones are safe, right? This little meerkat guy, he's worrying. He's worrying about all of his community, all of his tribe. But, you know, here's the message from the moon and from the crab, the crab of cancer that, you know, you're all safe. You're all going to be okay. You don't need to be worrying about everybody too much you know focus on your own alignment your own equanimity and of course you know you have maybe these uh, if you picked pile three you have you must have some kind of responsibility to other people whether it's just your partner uh or your family or if you have students or or uh employees whatever it is um you can have it's okay to be responsible for them and it's okay to look after them i mean it's good to look after them that is what you're being called to do with this card but you don't need, don't be like an overprotective, over worrying mother because that energy doesn't help them and it certainly doesn't help you. It doesn't help anybody. So as you learn to wield your responsibility and to carry out your responsibilities, just remember that, you know, new moon in Cancer, you and your loved ones are safe. That, that was so synchronous. I, I love it. <laughs> okay, pile four. I'll pull the animal cards first. Transformation, sea otter. I love this. The sea otter, um, the reason the subtext is transformation is there's lots of myths about sea otters being able to be shapeshifters or people transforming into sea otters. And, you know, before I got this deck, actually, I didn't, I didn't actually know that. I never thought of sea otters as very much of a, like, I never heard of like, you know, like a, a wear otter, right? Uh, or any kind of like a skin changer that changes into a, a sea otter, but they're definitely symbols of trans transformation. Um, also to me, really like mutability, like if you're getting this card, you are being called to be flexible and being able to kind of turn on a dime in order to adapt to your surroundings. This isn't some, to me, it's not so much of a, like not really like a butterfly in a cocoon style transformation it is an adaptation to your surroundings and becoming learning as you go and learning to be quick on your feet it's that kind of a uh really fluid like not like a plateauing like i feel like a butterfly you know it's in the cocoon and it comes out as a butterfly and then that's it it, it almost stops transforming right the sea otter continuously transforms um you know it, just like a sea otter riding on the waves have you guys ever seen uh, you know, sea otters or even river otters because they're pretty similar, right? Just <laughs> just in the wild, riding the waves, you know, having a grand old time. Like they're so playful and so fun. And of course, you know, years ago there was that famous video of those two sea otters like holding hands <laughs> as they as they just drifted on their backs. Um, I I love sea otters, and I remember actually when I was in grade two, I my very first like book report project in school I did on sea otters, and I had no idea of their more like mystical symbolism back then. So you guys are in some kind of flow state and you're being asked to go with that. Absolutely go with the flow. Go with it with flexibility and playfulness. Absolutely playfulness with this. Your hard work is paying off. New moon in Capricorn. Yeah, as with this Capricorn, you guys have... Uh, I feel like you have jumped in to something and for a while maybe you thought it was more than you could chew. Um, but that is why you're leaning into this sea otter magic of going with the flow and transforming and 
adapting to your environment because uh, with, with Capricorn, uh, this new moon in Capricorn, you're definitely, you've been working on something. It's you're, you're climbing some kind of mountain, you know, it doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to be like climbing the corporate ladder, although this would absolutely apply to that situation, you know, it could be an artistic project or, you know, traveling that you're doing or just your home life. Um, but whatever it is you've been, it's like, you've been working hard at being flexible, I think. And this is just the sign that, you know, you're on the right track. Keep, keep going with it. Keep going with the flow, live in the flow, right? All right, pile number five. Gorilla. This is card number one. And this is a card of being so sovereignly powerful, but using your power only for peace. That is actually the subtext here, peace. Um, just look how powerful this gorilla is. and he, But he's sitting here so zen looking out over the clouds and this like planet that almost looks like it's like set setting into the ocean. So much wisdom and power coming out of this guy, this silverback gorilla. Um, and the card, man, I just, I feel like <laughs> as soon as I see this card, I, I feel like a calm ocean, right? I, I feel almost like I'm, my speech is slowing down just getting this because I, this card is like an ocean energy to me, like the power of the ocean. What is a more powerful force on this planet than the ocean? <laughs> but it is, but the ocean can be so calm, but it is deep and it is, it is everything. It is where everything came from. It is, and the power of its depth and of its movement and its ability to explode into violence, just like this, this silverback, but it, it's not going to do that. Not, not typically, not unless it's provoked. <laughs> um, whew, the, the, I guess that's it for that. I, I'm almost at a loss for words because of the, uh, the, you guys have, have a very deep power. And even if you don't feel like that right now, you're cultivating it. You're cultivating it. It is coming from deep inside. I, I'm hearing like soul remembrance. You're remembering something about your soul, about your past lives, about powers that you have buried so deep down inside that you forgot that they even existed. And they're going to be surfacing, not violently, not, not really like bubbling up, but coming up like, like a rising tide. That is, <laughs> that, that got, th this is deep. This is a profound card for me right now. Let's see what the moon card is. Nothing is set in stone, mutable moon. Yes, whatever powers you feel you might have, maybe as a kid, you know, you thought you could fly or, you know, you thought you should be able to move that pencil with, without touching it. Or you thought you were, or have you ever thought you hear other people's thoughts? Like, have you ever looked at somebody, uh, like bumped into somebody and you thought they said something like this, you thought they said sorry and then you realize that they didn't actually move their lips, but you heard them. <laughs> Stuff like that. Thing, things that you th think should be impossible aren't, aren't in fact impossible. They're mutable. Nothing is set in stone. Oh, look at this. Look at this ocean. I <laughs> um, not all these cards have oceans on them, these moon cards. Uh, I, I was just talking about the ocean with this gorilla. So nothing is set in stone. You're literally, the, like I was saying earlier, the power of this ocean you guys have something is seriously, seriously powerful, bubbling up, um, rising up. And it is powers, skills, abilities, memories, soul fragments that you completely not only forgot you had, you thought were impossible for anybody to have or to even exist. So my back just cracked and I feel just calm in a really stable, powerful way, which I was absolutely not feeling like that before I pulled those cards. So I'm definitely tapping into your guys's energy. And I mean, thank you for that. I probably got more out of this reading than you guys did <laughs> because I was all over the place uh, this morning. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that for you guys. Uh, good luck on your, on your journey here. 
All right, last card, pile six. Tarantula. And the subtext is connection. This is an extremely, like, divinely feminine card. This is a feminine archetype. Uh, we got this girl with the tarantulas. But this is, um, you might think, like, ew, spiders, right? <laughs> um, but this is not, this is not so much about, you know, creepy crawlies. This is about the web of existence, about, like, the, the actual fabric of reality and, you know, whatever is beyond our physical reality. If, if you've ever read The Wheel of Time, uh, you, you know, the idea of the, uh, like, the tapestry, the the weave of reality, how uh, they, they think that, you know, reality is like a piece of cloth with every single strand weaving everything together. That is what this is talking about, that the cosmos is like a spider's web with all of these delicate filaments all coming together at little nexus points, but also creating a really grand design. So with this card, I feel like you're also already noticing that you're, you are absolutely starting to understand how everything is connected. Even things that seem that they couldn't be connected or even things that aren't good, that don't feel good when they happen, right? When something bad happens to you, uh, you're starting to think, Hey, what is, what is the lesson here? Or what might this lead to? How is this actually working? for me what is it connected to what is the bigger picture you guys are asking about the bigger picture and i mean if you haven't been asking thinking about the bigger picture you're about to start seeing the bigger picture in a huge way you're being called to zoom out and see the web of existence <laughs> and your moon card the answers you need are coming full moon in gemini that is a wonderful pair because, uh, you, like I was just talking about with uh, you, when something bad happens to you, you know, old you might have just freaked out and gone, this is horrible, how could this be happening to me? <laughs> you know, as is uh, completely understandable. New you is starting to go, why is this happening? But not in like a, you know, oh, woe is me kind of way. In a, absolutely in a, what like what is actually happening here what is the bigger picture and right now you might not know but you might have a sense that you know it's the feeling when you lose your job it's easy to freak out and go my life is over what is better to do is go okay what doors are opening for me where am i going what is my new opportunity maybe this is the best thing that happened to me because i didn't actually like that job anyway and now you can move on to a much better job and the same thing applies for when you go through a horrible breakup what doors is that opening for you? You're going to be able to travel now, do something you always wanted, find, you know, your true soulmate. <laughs> um, with this card, right now you're in your wondering phase, but, you know, the answers are coming. Um, it might take until till the full moon in Gemini. I mean, that's uh, quite a while away. <laughs> okay, pile six, welcome back. Uh, literally, as I was just talking about the full moon in Gemini uh, while I was editing, uh, the video just ended. I mean, that that's okay because it was the end of your reading. I only said like a few more kind of rambling blurbs after that and then, you know, concluded the video. Um, <laughs> but I had to laugh because this is exactly what I was just talking about of when bad things happen to you. I, I mean, I could have gotten all frustrated and I certainly wanted to be frustrated and all irritated that like, where did the last, you know, two minutes of this video go? It just disappeared because I remember very clearly when I finished filming that I, you know, hit stop on my camera. So I don't know <laughs> why it vanished. Uh, there's still plenty of room on my phone, but uh, I decided just to look at the bigger picture. I, you know, came, pulled these, found these cards, pulled them back out, turned the camera back on. And I feel like pulling you one more card out of the Starseed Oracle deck to see what your bigger picture is. These are already pretty well shuffled, but I'll just shuffle them for you here. So you can see I'm... Sometimes I wonder if people think I'm just laying out cards, even though that would be like planning out a reading with... Oh, that's the card. Uh, what I was just saying was planning out a reading, pulling out cards, like picking cards and planning out what you're going to say. That's like so much more work and so much harder than just doing it uh, authentically and like in the flow. So yeah, be that as it may, let's see what your uh, Starseed Oracle card is here. Jump in. 
Andromedan energy adventure. Say yes to change. <laughs> I love that you guys got this Andromedan card. Uh, we were just talking about the web of existence, you know, the web of the cosmos. And here you are, uh, you know, this card really tapping into the energy of another galaxy and jumping in and being willing to experience the adventure of traveling into the unknown. And that is really something you... Most of us aren't comfortable doing unless we're looking in the bigger picture. And this is the Starseed Oracle. And I've been noticing that people are using it even though they don't seem to be into Starseed stuff. So I don't know if you guys are Starseeds or, you know, if you remember having past lives on other planets. Uh, but I think if you're tuning into this and the fact that I had to come... Uh, Back to the camera, just to pull this card for you guys. Somebody watching this has had past lives in Andromeda. That's just, to me, that is how I'm gonna interpret this bigger picture. <laughs> and all of these connections, why is this happening? I think there's gonna be at least one person syncing up with this video at some point over the next, It could you could be watching this even a couple years from now. Uh, this message is to you, you had past lives in Andromeda. You are a star seed. Uh, if you haven't heard that term before, it basically just means you had past lives on other planets. I mean, if you already, you know, know you're a star seed and maybe you never resonated with Andromeda before, this is your chance to uh, kind of start exploring that energy. And maybe you're going to be remembering uh, something about those lives or something about your Andromedan heritage. Because, you know, you are connecting everything up. The answers you need are coming and you are seeing that great cosmic web. Maybe you're going to start to understand that Andromeda isn't actually that far away from us. And I'm really remembering, uh, you know, recently they're discovering the intergalactic filaments, those like uh, stretches of gas and particles that actually connect galaxies. You know, so the galaxies aren't entirely isolated. They are also connected uh, in, you know, the great cosmic neural net. And that is what's happening here. So this is a kind of a cool way to end the reading. I really like that this turned, you know, lemons into lemonade. Uh, not to get all irritated that the end of my video was cut off, but to come back here and find out that, you know, Andromeda starseeds are shooting into this is a pretty fucking cool. So it was nice to to meet you guys. <laughs> um, I feel like we're we're meeting, you know, we're exchanging energies, even if we never, even if you don't leave a comment and even if we never... Uh, talk to each other at all, you know, in our, in our human forms, um, on some level we are resonating with each other. And I think that's awesome. So thank you so much, uh, for existing so that I can have this reading come up for me to do. It's a privilege and an honor, and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.